Hey everyone, Bit here. So, I made a video a while ago about this. The PyTop 4. It was specifically about an, an update to its operating system that, that allowed you to directly connect a tablet wirelessly to it oh, by having the PyTop spawn a Wi-Fi access point. Well, now I have a completely different way to view the pie top. This is actually two devices. Wait a minute. You have a dummy tablet and a keyboard. And a keyboard. So, th this is the PyTop FHD touch display and their Bluetooth keyboard. They, they literally just call it the PyTop Bluetooth keyboard. And it's designed to go with their flagship product, the PyTop 4, but it will work with any device because of this hub thing. It's technically called the display adapter in their documentation, but I keep calling it the hub, the hub thing. Yeah, that's what I was calling it when I was looking at the pictures of this thing. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry if my voice is off. I think I've been having allergy problems recently. Also, the sc screen's reflective. It's revealing me holding this device. And you can probably guess it's a PyTop product. Not from the PyTop logo, if I... Even if I hid the Pie Top logo, because it's got the um, turquoise plastic, it's got the this shade of turquoise that they've been branding the Pie Top products with ever since they brought out the Pie Top Four. They've always had some sort of green color. When they brought out the Pie Top Four, they moved to this very deep turquoise. They moved to this turquoise color. For their, they moved to marketing the device with this turquoise color. You probably remember it from a Pie Top video. as uh, the color of the Pie Top logo on the device, and the color of the plastic on the bottom. It's all the same turquoise, blue, green color. It's all in this turquoise color. And it looks very similar to my S7 Plus. My Samsung S7 Plus. This has got this background from the computer clan on it. And I got this background from the computer clan. I've been using it on all the devices since because I like the color blue so much. And it's a very blue desktop background. <laughs> if you haven't watched them before, they make a bunch of stuff about Macs. And also a couple of scam tech videos. <laughs> so, this is the Pi Top 4, and it's what powers that. Now, if I close the screen, because it's kind of like a, it's even got a thumb port, like a laptop, to open it if you've got the keyboard attached to the display. And it doesn't actually connect with Bluetooth to the Pi Top if you've got it. Ducked if you got the keyboard attached to the display. <laughs> kind of like with my tablet keyboard, it connects with pins on the magnetic interface. It connects with pins on a magnetic interface. So you can see it's got this here. Also, so there's not really much to this display other than a port to plug in the Pi Top or 
or the aforementioned hub thing or the aforementioned hub thing but it's the same port that you use for this blue this for this turquoise colored cable that's the Pi Top display cable you plug in you plug one end into the display the other end into the turquoise framed port on the Pi Top there's actually a notch so unlike most USB-C cables it only goes in one way and for some reason you see there's this interface on the bottom of the Pi Top but there's no matching connector for that interface because you actually what this spot is for because you got power button and brightness there's no speaker there's a speaker on the Pi Top but if you connect something to it like my Nintendo Switch with this hub then you have to get audio out of the device some other way for the Switch you just plug a speaker into its headphone jack or use wireless audio the Bluetooth audio update was like is like the best update to the Switch ever. So you attach the Pi Top to the display. And then to take it off again, because this thing, it's not to hold this top cover on. It's to hold the Pi Top to whatever it's mounted to with these clips. So I can't pull it off, but if I push the button, I can pull it off. Because you can actually have this, but even if you have your Pi Top attached to the display like that, you still have to take the turquoise cable. So you still have to take this turquoise colored cable and plug it into the display and into the Pi Top. And the single cable provides all the functionality it needs. And you may think, well, the display must have some sort of battery in it. No, it doesn't. The display has no battery in it. There's a couple of lights, but if I press this button, those lights don't come on. The, the display is powered by the Pi Top. The display is powered by the Pi Top. So, you gotta keep watch of your Pi Top's battery when using this display. I think it's it would probably last around two to three hours on a charge with the display. At least based on whatever on what PyTop OS says. So once you got that plugged in, you can open it and uh turn it on. And then you just the Pi Top on the back that that spot that the Pi Top attaches to is and where the buttons are. That's also a stand, so you can fold it. So you can fold it out. So you can open it, fold, fold out the stand, and then hit the power button on the Pi Top. Or more like hold it down for a second. And as you can see the light, the green light in the keyboard turned on, and right now it's trying to connect to Bluetooth. <laughs> You yeah, may be wondering why I got this drive here and the other drive. I'm only going to be using this one today because I'll show you why I have this with the Pi Top. And normally it's on its USB C side, but to plug into the Pi Top, I have to flip it to its A side. I'm just using this because it's 128 gigabytes. That one is uh, 64. And also because that one's USB 3.0. or 3.2 gen, these confusing USB names. So you can see it's not an OLED screen. So you can see it's not OLED. You can see a definite backlight glow when it's powering on and not showing anything. Or whenever it's got predominantly black on the screen. And that's as bright as it goes, I'm hitting the brightness button. Although you can, you can turn it down. So that 
notification at the top was just the system update. So right now, and as you can see, the Bluetooth light stopped flashing, and I can move the cursor on the screen if I need to turn down that brightness to make it easier for you to see. You can see I can move the cursor on the screen with the touchpad. And I can bring up the, well I just hit further, not the, uh, I just hit further, not the uh, app menu. Let me sit down. <laughs> so I can get closer to it. So close that browser that just popped up. So if I hit the um, menu button, so I got programming, so later down there's a button that looks like a grid of icons. Hit that and it brings up the the start menu. Or its version of a start menu. Down here you got a calendar, volume settings, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and the battery battery status. Yeah, it says you got about 2.7 hours um, on full charge with this. But one thing about, because right now this is just running PyTOP's official software, PyTOP OS, which is based on Raspberry, just stock Raspberry Pi OS. And the desktop environment that comes with it is not all that touch friendly. Like, I can go to Universal, there's a, go to the Universal Access menu and bring up the on-screen keyboard, which is just, which is just onboard. It's a common Linux app. I can even have it where it makes sounds. And also a little button on the screen to bring it up when you need it, because I don't want it to come up when I'm trying to type in text fields using the keyboard. So like if I go to the menu, accessories, mouse pad, like I can use it with a touch screen, but it's not really tablet-like, because this display itself is actually thin as a tablet when you hold it. You just have to take the pie top off to make it light enough to hold without making it feel super chunky. So if I, I got mouse pad, which is um, the text editor, it's, I think it's XFCE's text editor. I'll go and detach the stupid keyboard. Because I keep moving the touchpad around. So the quick or Fox jumps over the lazy dog. I type O as a zero. Control A, back, Alt F4, don't save, close keyboard. But this isn't really, this isn't really tablet-like. You can use it with a touch screen in Chromium, which is its default browser. Now, for some reason, on here, um, Chromium. If I try to open YouTube, yes, yeah, can crash. I don't know why this version of Chromium that's on here is so bad. I don't know why the version of Chromium that got on here is so bad, but it just is. It's probably better if you just take Chromium off of here and use Firefox instead. Now, for some reason, the only version of Firefox is in their repositories is the is the ESR, the Extended Support. <laughs> But there are other operating systems. You just don't want to use them as the remain on the PyTOP because there's a lot of special features that the PyTOP has that only works if you use PyTOP's software. So, let me shut this down. Now one weird quirk with shutting it down is um, you gotta flip it over and then look at the side of it, because it doesn't always turn off automatically. 
if you leave it for a while, it will turn off automatically, but you look and wait for it to flash a few times and then stop, and then just hold down the power button until it turns off. And then, for some reason, Pytop did something to where I can't change the bootloader on the... Or I can't change the boot order on the Pi. So... What I have to do is take the SD card out, and then put it in just enough. I just lightly put it in there, and then put the cover back so that the SD card does not connect to the Pi. And then I attach it back, then I'll attach it back and plug in the thumbstick and plug in that USB stick. I haven't got the keyboard attached, so... so. And then uh, turn it on. I was looking at the side where the LEDs are. Oh, sorry for that loud noise. I'm just moving in a bit closer to it so that you can see it better. See, it's coming on now. I'll go ahead and turn the brightness back up so I can see it better. So as you see, I have Manjaro on here. So as you can see, now I have Manjaro on here. If you don't know what Manjaro is, it's a distribution based on Arch Linux that um, has a few different desktop uh, environment options, including this one. This is um, running GNOME, and I'm glad you can't actually see my uh, my real name there. I'm gonna turn this around, and actually I'll put up right for free it off the screen so I can type my password in. Okay, it's, yeah, it unlocked. Sometimes I have misfortune with these, uh, with keyboards. I sometimes, I sometimes just, because I try to type so fast on physical keyboards, I make typos and passwords, or I try to type in on my mobile phone, or I try to type in on my phone. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's logged in now. And you can see it's running GNOME 40, so it's pretty new. And you can see you've got these yellow letters that's showing it's an ARM version because of the ARM processor inside the Raspberry Pi. And it kind of got this custom theme that's kind of based around this t t turquoise color. It's got the same... <laughs> it's got almost the... Manjaro's theme color is almost the same tone of turquoise that um, Pytop is like a slightly lighter shade than what Pytop uses, but it's very close. As you can see, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you can see the accessibility icon up there in the corner next to the Wi Fi icon. And if you hit that, you can see it's, I got screen keyboard enabled so that I can use it like a tablet. That this, the on-screen keyboard is how I was entering my password when the thing was off screen. Let me show you the keyboard. You can actually just, if I close it again, you can just swipe up from the bottom to bring up the keyboard. And then you swipe with three fingers you switch desktops. I can emphasize this further. If you swipe up with three fingers, you get the activities menu. And then you just hit that, and you get your apps. And now you can see where the tablet DNA is. 
I've always liked Gnome for its um, touch, for being touch friendly, because I like touch screens on computers. Because I like touch screens on computers. This one is very much like a tablet, and and it's just so tablet. And this OS just makes the um, just has allows you to have such a more tablet-like desktop than you can with Pi OS, at least without some tinkering. I haven't gone and found any articles about how to get GNOME to work on Pi to, on a Raspberry Pi OS. Because if there's a set of instructions for Raspberry Pi OS, it should work on Pi Top OS, because they're literally the same thing. It's just like a slightly modified desktop and some special packages that interact with the hardware of the Pi Top. Because if you look at the Pi Top, there's nothing on its little OLED screen right now. Because there's no special packages inside Manjaro ARM that uh, make it so that it works with the Pi Top. I think these buttons just like interact with some GPIO. <laughs> There's even this app called Cheese, which, if you had a webcam connected, would allow you to take a photo with your webcam. Which, if you had a webcam connected, would let you take a photo. There's even this icon here. Okay, screen, screenshot. Who, who, needs, <laughs> who needs that in their favorites list? Remove, remove it from favorites. And then I think if, like, I can just take like if I wanted, like Geary the email, like if I wanted Geary the email client to be in the uh, taskbar, if Geary has been added to your favorites, did it get moved over there? No. Okay, it seems like if something if something's in your favorites, it doesn't appear in the main um, app menu. So Geary is just an email client, but it is, if I open it, you know, if I hit, if I hit X on the accounts, it's just going to close, but it's a surprisingly mobile-like, um, email client, similar to Windows Mail, similar to Windows Mail, okay, can I swipe up, no, no there is a search bar. You can use to search for apps. Then over there, then you have your workspaces. So you can switch between workspaces. You have your, you have the trash can. Yeah, you have the trash can and the files app. And then you can, if you want to make it even more like a tablet, you can well, <laughs> I keep I keep minimizing it. I want to maximize it. See? And you can go to downloads. So yeah, for a desktop OS, like I know other desktop and desk I know other Linux distros have the GNOME desktop, but I really like how Mancharo has implemented GNOME, and I think Ubuntu would even would be even better on here because Ubuntu has the sidebar, and you can just tap the Applications button without having to do this uh, swipe gesture first, or you. <coughs> without having to do the swipe gesture and you, you don't have to do the swipe gesture you could just hit the um, activities button you just go up here and hit the activities button in the top left corner then right here you got this um, update button and if you hit and then under that update button you can hit package manager 
Which brings up its sort of app store. Which brings up its sort of app store. It's not really a store, there's nothing paid on it. But you can use it to install things like like Lib like Lib wait, I thought LibreOffice was already on here. Wait, I thought LibreOffice was already on here. Yeah, LibreOffice is already on here. I don't know why it's showing that. You got Arduino, you got the Arduino, you got GIMP, Inks Inkscape, Cura for three D printers, LibreOffice, RetroArch emulator, Shotwell for photos, VLC media player, probably one of the better media players. I install it on all my Windows devices, and I can install it here. Just have to hit the hit the little arrow, hit the little downward arrow, and it turns into a check mark. And at the bottom says one pending operation, and I can even go. I've had categories. I can hit. I can hit categories to um, like games. You can bring up games and even scroll up and down with the touch screen like a tablet. You have a twenty forty eight Mahjong. Uh, Snake, a uh, game called Robots, yes, install. We have a game called called Robots. Uh, Mines, which is just Minesweeper. We can go back. You got Mines, which is Minesweeper. Will, will, will you go back? Okay. Categories. Uh, Swell Foop is one of my favorites on Linux. Swell Foop is one of my favorite Linux games. Yeah, Super Tux, which is like a Mario, a Mario-like game. Quadrapassel, which is Tetris. You know, Quadrapassel, which is a Tetris clone. Lutris for playing games, although you can't really install any Universal games on here because it's all. You can't really put any Windows games on here because it's ARM. You got some stuff from KDE, you got some uh, educational stuff. But you can even go to um, education and science for stuff like like uh, Bible study, um, octave for numerical comp for like math, um, Gerber viewer for circuit for circuit boards, um, another calculator type app, um, open street map, and if I'm ready to install it, I'm ready to install what I want, it says seven pending operations, so I got seven apps set to install, I also got K-Touch, which is a typing teacher, hit apply, and then you got some stuff for like, hit live DVD CSS for, um, you hit li we'll say live DVD CSS, so you could like plug a DVD drive into it, so that you could live DVD CSS is um, for DRM protected DVDs. So hit choose authentication required. Now put the password. Put in the password and see it's 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 gone. And you can see you can see whatever the world I selected. You can see what I selected and then apply. And then you can see what I that I see can I can see what I selected and hit apply.
then in only a couple of, then only about like 10, 15 seconds, it's all, it's all done. I can also go up here and update it if it needs updates. Yep, nope, it doesn't need updates. So yeah, it's really, it's not really an app store, they call it a package manager, but it is really simple, like an app store, where you can just say, I'd like, I'd like to find games, and just go find some games and download them in a really simple way, even, even batch them into a single job, and even do a batch job of multiple installations. Like, you can, you can even do it on a mobile device, you just go hit install on multiple apps in succession, it just installs one app in the background while you go, while you continue going looking at the Play Store or App Store or whatever. And then I can swipe up. I can swipe up with three fingers to go to the menu. And then let's say you want to play a Swell Foop. Let's say we we'll want to play Swell Foop. And then we'll go to Setup. Oh, actually, we'll just, no. We'll play Swell Foop. Go to setup and we'll say it's a large board. Hit new, say it's a large board and hit new game. And it's still in the intro screen, so it says welcome to Swell Food. Clear as many box, well, clear as many blocks as you can. Fewer clicks means more points. Let's play. So you get this grid of colored and shaped block, of colored and shaped blocks. The green ones have squares. The blue ones have circles and the yellow ones have stars. So I can clear this block of blue ones, or blue ones. So I can just clear these blocks. If you clear just two in a row, it doesn't give you any points. The bigger the bigger cluster of blocks, the bigger the cluster of blocks you clear, the more points you get. And I'm having trouble clearing this one blue set at the bottom. <laughs> it probably work better if I attach the keyboard and use the mouse. So it's still a sort of mouse friendly game, unless yeah, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work. And I just minimized it. Wait a minute, I had to bring it back up. And I just minimized it. I could probably just... Well, <laughs> can I... Yeah, I can make it bigger. Make it, make it slightly bigger. Yeah, I, st I still can't hit those group of blue blocks at the bottom. I can't, I can't hit anything right there. Okay. Close it. Now I can't really, I don't think their version of Tetris supports touch controls. And to be honest, touch controls in Tetris just results in more misdrops because I've tried playing touch on a mobile phone. Yeah, you have to use a keyboard. <laughs> yeah, you have to use, you have to use a keyboard. Okay, what but <laughs> Like, what button do you use to rotate the pieces? And this is a, like, modeled after an older version of Tetris. Not like a modern version of Tetris, because it doesn't use a seven-bag randomizer. Now, I'm not a, I'm not a multiplayer Tetris player. I just, I, I can't, I can't play Tetris well enough to do multiplayer Tetris. My... My favorite multiplayer game is, um, is, is of course Splatoon, and also Roblox, but Roblox, I play a lot of core games. There's a couple of games that involve action and competition, but not that many that I play. But Splatoon is my favorite online multiplayer game that's not on Roblox. Probably my favorite one ever. It's just that there's some there's some cool stuff on Roblox that I actually like that's mostly like core games and you got ac some action games and a couple of games that involve competition like Find the Square, like Survive the Disaster is a little competitive. 
So, and you can't you can't play Roblox on this. Obviously, it's an ARM processor, unless you um, try try unless you figure out how to get Android on it and with the Play Store, so you can install Roblox, and then it wouldn't run very well because the Raspberry Pi. So you swipe up, you hit that button, and don't, I don't want to use Workspace too. I just hit activities, hit that, and then you can open your apps and. I've also got weather and uh, maps. I can't open either of those two apps because it'd probably reveal where I am. But you get to picture your maps. It's just maps and weather just shows you the weather for wherever you are. I also got photos. It's, I guess I don't know why they were showing off Shotwell in the store, but you got photo. That's a photo library. I'm pretty sure it would sync with Google Photos if you have Google Photos and maybe OneDrive, but <laughs> I'm not sure about that. And they got videos and what the world channels are. Oh, okay, so you got a couple of online stuff. You have Rye, Rye.TV, I don't know what the world that is. Apple Movie Trailers, Euronews, and uh, a local storage device, which is a just a Western Digital MyCloud. Yeah, network storage device, which is just a Western Digital MyCloud, but it has um, capabilities for broadcast. And then you got um, another thing that I think is included here is is or is it included? I don't know. M music. It's probably. It's probably something like rith Rhythm Box or what? what is this? Hey DJ, the contents of your music folder. Okay, so it's, I don't think it's Rhythm, I don't think it's actually Rhythm Box, but you could go get Rhythm Box from the store. It's a, Rhythm Box is a popular um, Linux music player. It's a very iTunes-ish application. And then, when you're all done, you just tap the corner. When you're all done, you just tap the corner. And also up there is where you can change the volume because when you don't have the keyboard attached, you got no volume buttons. And then uh, also you got Wi-Fi settings, Bluetooth, uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings. You can bring up the whole, you can bring up the whole system settings menu. You can bring up the entire system settings. You can lock the screen, or you can shut it down or restart. Now you can shut down, restart, or log out, and we're going to shut it down. You heard the speaker pop there. Now it's flashing, so I just close it up, fold the thing down, hold the button, and it's off. And then just try to flip it over, pull that cover off, and push the card through. Pull that cover off. I just got to take it off, flip it over, pull, pull the cover off, and push the card further in. And push the SD card further in so that it makes contact. I can unplug the drive and reboot it, and it's on PyTop OS again. So this was kind of both a look at this PyTop display and um, Mancharo ARM for PyTop with GNOME as its desktop. And I, I'm pretty sure I'd like it, but they just need to. PyTop needs to put support packages into the needs to make support packages for all of the um, Raspberry Pi ready operating systems. PyTop can still have their own PyTop OS software, but if they would make support packages for these special hardware features for other Linux distros that run on a Raspberry Pi, like the popular ones like Ubuntu like Ubuntu for Pi 4 and Ubuntu server for Ubuntu server for Pi 4 Ubuntu they got Ubuntu for Pi 4 Manjaro for Pi 4 um and all of the other mainstream Linux distros that are compatible with the Pi top with the Raspberry Pi 4 need support packages by Pi top for the Pi Top, so that you can use these alternate OSs 
with your Pi Top without compromising on features. Because, like, without any support packages like there is in Pi Top OS, there's no battery indicator. So, I'd have to rely on, like, either a light on the side, if it even has, like, a red light on the side to tell you when its battery's out, or battery low. Or just I use it and then it just suddenly dies and I have to plug it in. <laughs> so yeah, that's the only drawback to using an alternate OS like Manjaro Arm on a Pi Top 4. But they included all these special hardware features, so yeah, they just need to make the support packages. So yeah, this was, this was kind of more of a look at Manjaro Arm and just how much I like it for how well it works with the Pi Top touchscreen. <laughs> and you could also use it with just a normal Pi 4 with a Pi with a Raspberry Pi touchscreen. I just I just like the Pi Top 4 so much. I just liked the idea of the Pi Top 4 so much. So I got the Pi Top 4 and for the Pi Top 4 you need the Pi Top touchscreen. And I didn't even have to connect a second USB cable to the thing, it just passes all that data through this turquoise cable that's connected to the Pi Top. If you were using it with another device, like just a bog standard Raspberry Pi 4, um, or Pi 3 or whatever, you would have to connect a micro USB cable to that port on the dock, on, on the adapter, to get the touch functionality and to pass the keyboard through because this keyboard, even though it's Bluetooth, has these magnetic pin, has these pins on it that allow it to connect directly to the Pi Top when it's docked. Now, if you don't want to have to worry about the display when charging your Pi Top, just pull that cable out and pop off the Pi Top. Just pull that cable out, pop off the Pi Top, and plug it in. See how much we damage our battery. Only 78% down from full. And it does charge. I have a 65 watt USB C charger that I actually had to get in order to use the Pi Top. Because the Pi. The, a normal Raspberry Pi 4 power adapter will not work with the Pi Top because it needs at least a 45 watt PD adapter in order to. Um, actually work. So I got a 65 watt adapter, and since I don't use the Pi Top all that often, I've been using it for my tablet and such because they're all everything. Every mobile device has USB C these days. My Samsung Note 10 phone and my tablet. So yeah. So that's been a look at the Pi Top FHD Touch Display and their Bluetooth keyboard. It was more of a look at the touch display and how well it works with Manjaro and GNOME, or more specifically just the GNOME desktop in general. If I put Ubuntu on there, I probably would have been just as happy. But I decided to go with Manjaro just because I liked it and because it's different, not being based on Arch instead of Debian. So, yeah. Um, see you next time, and thanks for watching.